Battery maker Northvolt has flopped tremendously in Europe, leaving investors and governments scrambling on what to do next. But there is a lot of good news out there on the battery front from other companies, other countries, other continents. We're going to go into a whole bunch of great news after we cover the bad news. I'm Brian. Welcome to Future Asa. So what we've got here is unfortunate. Northvolt, they sunk $15 billion into this company. Uh, is that right? Something like that? Yes, $15 billion from governments and investors, and it just never reached capacity. 16 gigawatt hours uh, was less than a tenth of the continent's total, and it just didn't. They had problems. Everything they did, they just kept running into problems. Manufacturing uh, sophisticated batteries is complicated. It is a difficult task. Collapse of a competitor may seem like good news for Europe's other EV battery hopefuls, but they are unlikely to cheer. The circumstances surrounding it, like the huge technical challenge of scaling production, will not inspire other investors to support similar ventures. Yeah, I mean, maybe the other ones look good, but boy, I don't want to get North vaulted again. That's unfortunate. Leaving them with few choices leaves the continent with two options. CATL, which has made global expansion uh, one of its priorities, uh, and they manufacture around four-fifths of the world's lithium-ion batteries. I don't know if it's quite that high. Oh, uh, yes, but BYD is also a big one. China really dominates the battery scene. Then we've got some good news. The biggest grid storage project using old batteries is online in Texas. Startup Element Energy set out to prove that Second Life batteries could deliver cheaper energy safely and at scale. So yeah, you've got a battery, you put it in a car, you run it for as long as it makes sense. And then when it's done, what do you do with it? What happens if it gets to 60% capacity? It still works, but it's at 60% capacity. That's not great. Well, sometimes it'll go into a classic car or a project car, but those situations are pretty rare. You might start using it at your cabin for off-grid energy. Well, this is something that can be done at scale. Cleaning up the grid will require installing a lot of batteries, and this startup has provided a powerful uh, f proof point for a new way to do it with more, uh, more cheaply without sacrificing safety. So if you've got batteries that are at 50% capacity, use them. Just put them in and use them. Will it work? Well, apparently so. This project has tackled exactly that. It's not in the business of power plant development. Its strategy relies on leveraging the success of this first major installation to convince more storage developers to buy its lower-priced, refurbished grid batteries instead of the brand new ones. Great. They, and, you know, uh, a 72 million Series B last November alongside 38 million uh, uh, debt from Keyframe Capital after the 15 million dollar Series A. That's not a lot of money to get in business and here we are. They're in business. <laughs> so if these can be made and deployed for less money than new batteries, great. This is better than sending them back for recycling. These will still go back to recycle at some point, but they don't need to do it today. Yeah, and this is another article about it. It's great. 53 megawatt hour storage project consisting of repurposed batteries in West Central Texas. And this is through a U.S. Department of Energy um, key funding. So there's been a lot of talk about U.S. Department of Energy funding and how, well, they should only, you know, Rivian, $6 billion for Rivian. That seems crazy. And I agree. That doesn't seem like a good deployment of capital. But without it, I don't know if Rivian will survive. Do we want Rivian to survive? Personally, I do. But I would like to see them get a whole lot more financially responsible at home before asking for any of my money. Department of Energy makes a lot of loans for national security to help things out in ways and at times they wouldn't necessarily be able to help themselves. Tesla got one of these loans back when they needed it. They paid it off early with interest. Uh, so it works sometimes. It doesn't always work. Department of Energy also finances nuclear projects, solar projects, all kinds of energy projects. Now we've got this one. Uh, this is, I don't know, more exciting perhaps. World's first silicone anode battery will just let you drive 186 miles after just five minutes of charging. This is exciting news. A viewer shared it with me saying, my friend's looking to buy a car. Should he wait for this? And the answer is no. A ceramic battery manufacturer has unveiled, you notice they don't even say the name of it in the beginning here. And that's because that's the quality of the story to follow, unfortunately. That can charge from 5% to 60% in just five minutes, giving future EVs 
186 miles of range in the time it takes to order a coffee. Revealing the design, Prologium. Okay, so this is one of those miracle batteries du jour. We see these miracle batteries all the time. They're lighter, they're cheaper, they're safer, they're, uh, they can charge quickly. Uh, they can do absolutely everything except leave the lab, which is the most important part. So why don't we talk about something that can leave the lab? CATL unveils powerful 500-mile EV battery for heavy trucks with a 15-year lifespan. That's great. Long-life versions of Tektran's battery can last up to 1.86 million miles in 15 years, reducing operational costs for heavy-duty vehicles. Not just the cost, but the anxiety. And really, there's cost to, even if repairs were very cheap, repairs take time, and time is money. In shipping, you can't have your fleet down. You just can't. CATL, and by the way, I give this story more credence because CATL don't mess around. They are the real deal. When they say they've got something, it's because they have something. They have it. The launch held on November 25th marks the company's continued expansion into the electric heavy-duty vehicle sector. Makes sense. Now, this is a lithium iron phosphate battery. So it's not the high nickel. You may not get as much uh, range. 310 miles on a single charge is pretty good for a lot of routes that will absolutely work. Long haul trucking, not ready. Great. Let's fill all the needs we can with the technology that's available while the better technology is coming out. No need to let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Cattle claims that these batteries will drastically reduce charging times and improve operational efficiency in sectors like mine transportation and construction machinery. It's tough to say if they actually will charge faster. I'm not asking if they can, but if they will. Another story that was shared with me, because I said, what is this? What are we talking about? Someone shared a video of a car in China that can charge very, very quickly you know, like 800 kilowatts or something like that. Well, that's great, but there are no chargers in the U.S. There are no chargers outside of China, I believe, that can charge that fast. Not today. In the future, perhaps, but we're not there yet. And it's harder to know how long those batteries will last. When it comes to someone like BYD or CATL, I take their word a lot more seriously than some of the others. A step towards mass adoption, the fact that they can mass produce these already uh, and is being used by over 20 heavy-duty manufacturers worldwide. These batteries also support swapping models, which could further reduce downtime for vehicles that need to keep moving. And I would add to that, because you've already got a structure into which the batteries may, may fit, put them within the frame, that this could work. And it's not just that it takes the time to plug them in. Is it takes you may need to have an entire second set of batteries so that you can uh, afford to charge them. You may need to charge them at night. You may need to wait until there's grid capacity to charge them. We're talking about a lot of juice, and they could also be used to grid smooth. They could also be used to uh, do feedback to the grid as needed if it makes sense financially. These can be a good thing, um, and it wouldn't necessarily break the bank the way it would for individuals trying to do battery swaps. The company would own all the batteries. There wouldn't just be swap stations sitting out in the world waiting for a truck to wander by. Again, start with the projects you know and understand, move forward from there. And now we've got BYD to launch next gen battery, uh, blade battery in 2025. BYD serious company, a high volume, high production company, making lots of batteries, lots of cars. This is no surprise. They will launch their next gen battery next year. They just will. Uh, without this announcement, if you'd asked anyone who's paying attention, they'd have said, yeah, probably. I mean, I assume they will. I think it's in the coming years. Uh, in the coming years, 2025, BYD will introduce the new generation of our remarkable blade battery. I mean, superlatives aside, It'll be, I assume, slightly better than the ones they already have, which are already quite good. BYD focuses on battery lifecycle management systems and is working closely with partners in various industries to develop battery reuse systems. So that's exciting and real. That's the two things I look for in a story like this is exciting and real. There's another story I had about, um, I think it was Mercedes, that was integrating uh, 
fast draining batteries alongside slow draining batteries and that they'd figured out a way to manage it. I don't have it in front of me now, but the good news is all of these things are moving forward. All the manufacturers are getting a little bit better and a little bit cheaper every day, and the technology is moving forward. It's just happening. A hundred years ago, this was the excitement you were seeing in gas-powered automobiles and gas drivetrains, but not anymore. I did see a photo of someone who had converted a Model 3 back into a gasoline vehicle. Why stop there? Go all the way to steam, I say. Uh, and if we're doing steam, let's go one step further. Let's chop the floor out and flintstone this bad boy. That's one way to get to work. Badly, slowly, with calluses and broken ankles. Terrible. Very ridiculous. What did I miss? What did I misunderstand? Leave it. Leave it, I beg of you. And uh, guys, uh, if you get a chance, if you're looking to buy a new Tesla, you consider using my referral code. Because if you do that, you'll get one to $2,000 off, three months of free FSD, and I'll get a little bonus as well that I could use for uh, service or charging or um, uh, towards the purchase of a new Tesla. Can't afford a new Tesla, but if I max out my referrals, who knows? Maybe I will. Everybody else, like, subscribe, do what you do, stay tuned and juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity-flop.